As you guys can see, there is a shit ton of stuff all over my desk. That is because we are going to talk about every single part you will need to build your very own electric skateboard. So the purpose of this entire series is, is following me along the journey of building my own electric skateboard. I, I've already built my first one, but I'm building a second one. And we'll go through and, and I'll choose the, the parts that I want to use and, and go through why I chose the parts that I did, what you should choose, and stuff like that. You don't have to build the exact same board as me, but I will go through all the options so you guys can make an educated decision. So first things first is a deck. While I was trying to figure out what deck I wanted to use for my board, uh, I considered three different options. The first one is the kicktail option, just the black, straight, plain board. This is the same deck that Maddie has, just in black. This is also the original M board design right here before I did the customization options. I also considered a drop through deck, so the trucks would go now on top here, through the bottom. Um, I do really like this deck and I didn't actually think I was going to like this one, but as I'm building, this is actually a client's deck right here, but as I put the wheels and chucks on this, I actually really liked it. My uh, only fear is that that uh, the clearance on, on the drop through decks are not, it's not as good as uh, the downhill deck or the kick tail or the pintail because again, you're losing about a half inch uh, because you're mounting the trucks on top of the deck versus below. Not a big deal, there's still plenty of clearance, just not as much as the other decks. So that's the only reason why I really didn't go for this one and the length. So the ultimate deck that I did pick is the 36 inch downhill deck. I really like this dark wood. I like that it was shorter than 40 inches. I really wanted a shorter board. Uh, bottom line is this is what I'm picking, but again, pick the, the deck style that you really like. Just remember that the drop through deck has less clearance than the rest of the boards, but still plenty of clearance to put a motor and an enclosure on the bottom. Uh, these trucks are Calibre 2 trucks. I chose white because I'm going for a, a dark wood, orange and white theme. So yes. You're gonna need caliber two trucks because mostly all of the uh, motor mounts that are available, uh, they are shaped specifically for the caliber two shape. They have that flat edge and round outer part, so it fits on perfectly. Definitely want to get these. Paris trucks won't really work unless you're using hub motors. And the other trucks, you know, there's countless brands, but Caliber 2 is a way to go. There are really three main options. Uh, there are the regular ABEX style wheels. Uh, then there's the orangutan wheels that everybody seems to love. These are the wheels that are on the version 2 of the boosted board. And then there is the all-terrain massive 100 millimeter wheels that have the same kind of spoke setup as the ABEC wheels. So those are kind of your main options. I'm going for the uh, orange orangutan wheels. I like how soft they are. I like the look of them. These are quality wheels. Boosted boards use them for a reason. So I'm going with these. Uh, if you need cheaper wheels, you can go with these. Or if you want more off-roading options, then you can always go with these. These things are huge and they look fantastic on electric skateboards. So like eventually when I have a different setup for like uh, if when I go camping and stuff, I'll be using these wheels because these are monsters and they will go over like anything. So obviously you'll need stuff like bearings, deck hardware, riser pads, stuff like that. Just the regular skateboard stuff. Uh, also grip tape is in there. Uh, if you are confused on where to get any of the parts to talk about today, just remember I have a link in the description for a full parts list. Um, it'll point you to the proper place to buy all the stuff that you're going to need. So uh, just keep that in mind. Link in the description. In my original build, I used a piece of Tupperware. In my later builds, obviously I've come up with a better way and more clean looking way to kind of house it all. Uh, I actually make these enclosures myself. Uh, I have a wooden buck that I then thermoform plastic over the top of. So I'm gonna use my own enclosures. Uh, if you guys need an enclosure, uh, you can always go with the Tupperware option or I am gonna start selling these on my website. So if you need a nice looking enclosure, you can go there, it's mboards.co. Of course, I mean, I like mine, I'm gonna use my own, but of course you can use whatever you want. There are tons of different battery options out there, but I like to use the 18650s. Uh, I just buy a whole box of 18650s, weld them all together, throw a BMS on there, and I'm good to go. I used to use LiPos, but they start to swell and they're a pain in the ass to have to charge them, so I build my own battery packs now. Uh, many of you have actually asked, to, asked me to offer battery packs for sale. So if you need a battery pack, I sell 10S 2P batteries. Uh, you, the link's in the description. So if you need one, pick yourself up one. They're, I make them with care and love. <laughs> in my original build to 
turn my board on and off. I just plugged and unplugged the VESC into the battery. That's how I turned it on and off. Uh, in the new boards, I have this power switch. You literally just click the button, turn it on, click it again to turn it off. Really easy. I highly recommend this because if you do something wrong, you can definitely damage your VESC, which is one of the most expensive pieces of your board. So you definitely want to be careful. Highly recommend one of these. They're fantastic. So obviously you're going to need an electronic speed controller or a VESC, which is the upgraded version. Uh, this is it right here, real simple. You plug the battery into one side, the motor into the other, you call it a day. Uh, you have to have one of these. Uh, a lot of people ask me if you can just use a regular ESC. That depends. Make sure that the ESC can handle the amount of volts and amperage you're pumping into it with your battery. Um, but VESCs are designed for electric skateboards, so I would just use that. Along with a VESC, you're going to need a remote control. This basically tells your VESC how much power to take from your battery and push it toward the motor. So you'll need one of these, obviously, to control your board. Um, I like the this one. <laughs> it's in the, in the description. But uh, yeah, so you'll need this and a little servo cable to plug your receiver into the VESC so it all kind of works together. And uh, yeah. So one really important piece for an electric skateboard is the motor. Uh, I get my motors from Torque Boards or DIYElectricSkateboards.com. Uh, I get a lot of my motors from them, my vest, motor mount, pulley system, all like the really important pieces. They make really good high quality stuff. Uh, I actually uh, talked to him, grabbed you guys a coupon code. So if you are going to get a motor and all that kind of stuff, um, the links are in the description. And if you use the coupon code MIKE10, you'll get $10 off. Uh, an order of 100 bucks or more. So that's a good deal right there. You can get a motor for pretty cheap. Another really important piece for an electric skateboard is connecting the motor to your board with a motor mount. So the motor mount from Torque Boards, I find a really good option. In my part list, I have two different options, one from Torque Boards, another from Amazon. Uh, both of them are great. I just prefer the one from uh, Torque Boards a little bit better because they give you all of the screws necessary. Um, to screw your motor to the motor mount, which I find to be really, really helpful, especially because they're the same price. And I like the fact that this one is a little slimmer than the other one. But again, both of them are awesome. So if you prefer buying from Amazon, that's a great option too. Uh, you'll know what I'm talking about when you see my part list. So yeah. So once you have your motor and motor mount connected to your board, you're going to need to be able to convert that spinning motor to spinning wheels. So really simple. Again, from DIY Electric, they have really good options as far as pulley systems go. So this one just attaches to your wheel with a few screws. Uh, then the belt attaches to the motor with the little motor pulley. Really, really simple. You just kind of slide everything together, put a few screws on it, and you're good to go. Uh, all metal construction, so really, really high quality stuff. Uh, my other board is plastic and the plastic is wearing out a little bit. So the metal is a way better option. I would highly, highly, highly uh, recommend these as well. So again, up to you, but this is what I'm going to choose for my board. So that's about it. Those are the parts that I have chosen for my new board. Um, again, all the parts that I've used, link in the description below. I constantly get asked what I use for this, what I use for that. Just check it out, description below. Also, if you have any questions at all, at all, literally any question, stick it down below. I do my absolute best to answer everybody. Um, this is the first out of many tutorials. Uh, this one obviously picking my parts. A uh, few tutorials in the future are how to build batteries, how to put everything together, just stuff like that. Keep an eye out and uh, remember if you need a battery or enclosure, I got you. Links in the description. So I will see you next time in the next tutorial. See you later. All right. I think that went okay. Time to get B-roll.